Yeah, and uh, even hey, though one hold side. On, hold on, hold on. You're in Xander's what? thing. Yeah. Hello, idyllic nymph. How are you doing? Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. You sound great. Can you talk again? Perfect. Yeah, I'm here. I'm super nervous. So cut me some slack, please. Uh, no problem. I get nervous when I go on on streams and stuff like that too. Um, how are you doing today? I'm very well. Uh, overtired and a little stoned, but I think I should do fine. I am tired as well. <laughs> I'm not stoned, but I am high on caffeine. Uh, okay, so you wanted to talk about Scott Cawthon, yes? No, I literally have no idea who that is. Oh, what did, what did you want to debate about? Um, about trans issues, if that's okay. More of like a conversation, but I guess like it can be considered a debate. Okay, hit me up. Okay, so, you know, I've seen... Well, first off, I do like your content. I am a fan. But when I see some of your videos on trans issues, I, I get a little cringy because I don't like some of your opinions. I am trans, yeah, but it isn't obvious. Uh, it is actually not obvious. Um, oh. Yeah, so, so what, what opinions do you disagree with me on in regards to trans topics? Okay, so don't get me wrong, gender theory is a complex issue. To delve into in a couple sentences is hard, but I'll try. So essentially, there's this massive divide within the trans community. Obviously, one side is worse than the other, but nonetheless, it is like a real problem. And even bringing attention to the subject really kind of spreads or kind of causes transphobia amongst the community and to trans people. And I really don't like how, um, well, first off, conservatives are just terrible. They just say terrible things about trans people. But then on the super like liberal side, it's more so the other extreme. And it's not really, it's not really emblematic of what trans people uh, experience, if you know what I'm saying. So I I haven't really picked up on any um, concise arguments here, but I'm starting to pick up the idea that perhaps this is, has to do with the idea that um, non-binary people or non-disport trans people are uh, trans. Do you have a disagreement with that there? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, no. Uh, could you reword that? But no, I, no, that's not my opinion. So, so I'm curious, uh, more specifically, what is uh, your contention? Because I, I actually can't tell, um, like, what your position is that we disagree okay. on from what you described there. Okay, I'll elaborate more. Um, no, I don't think that dysphoria is necessary to be trans. All it takes is gender incongruence, and that's widely accepted. Um, mm -hmm. But I think people that think that it's necessary... <sighs> how can I wear this? They are completely demonized and, and just treated terribly. And although I have heard they have been pretty nasty, uh, supposedly, uh, factually, um, it doesn't change the fact that demonizing trans people is still transphobia and being mean to a trans person based on their views on their own community isn't a good thing and i've just experienced it in person before i even understood this debate which was really frustrating which is probably why i'm so passionate about the issue okay all right um all right i have a good idea of what your beliefs are now and where we might disagree so i think um is it all right if i go off now or is of there course. anything else you want yeah. to say all right so <clears throat> there is definitely um a lot of misunderstanding miscommunication and even downright cruelty that can happen yeah. in the trans community. Unfortunately, trans people have it a uh, pretty, pretty goddamn tough, right? So there's some good reason yeah. for why many trans people, when they feel as though their identity is being in some way discarded or discredited, they may mm -hmm. react in an arguably cruel manner towards those that disagree with them. Uh, I completely understand that. I understand why they act that way. And I understand, um, you know, the motivation behind it. Um, however, I do disagree with the idea that there are a lot of people who are being demonized just because they disagree with the idea that you have to have dysphoria to be trans. Typically, it's not just, oh, I disagree with that idea and it's a passing thing. Usually, those that get shit for that kind of stuff, unless we're talking about like woke scolds going after contrapoints and trying to ruin her life, in that case, we have no disagreement. Um, well, I but think if we're that's talking a good about. Example. Well, yeah, the problem is the accusation being hurdled at ContraPoints isn't true, but if we're talking about the likes of Blair White or Rose of Dawn, etc., then the accusation would be accurate. 
Well, it depends on the accusation. When we're talking about contra points, she, well, we think we can both agree, she didn't really do anything, and she got a bunch no, of hate. Absolutely and that, not, yeah. And, and that's just how it kind of works right now. Like, if you say, if you're trans especially, uh, if you say one thing that's kind of out of alignment with the norm view, uh, you are demonized. You're silenced, you're banned on social media, and, like, it's, it's true. It's not, uh, you can't, it, it's basically like a lack of free speech, if you know what I'm saying. That's not exactly what a lack, what losing free speech is. Free speech is a idea granted to you by the government that prevents you from being censored for having your opinions censored by the government. People getting upset at you and attacking you and dogpiling you online because they disagree with you isn't exactly a, a an impedance on your freedom of speech. It's more so just a massive inconvenience and perhaps even a danger. Um, I actually, uh, you ever seen the show Black Mirror? I have. <laughs> you ever seen the fucking the Hated in the Nation episode? I watched it for the first time last night. That shit was too fucking real. The cartoon politician guy? Um, no, no, no. That was the that was the one with can the cancel culture episode where the bees are like burrowing into people's heads if oh, enough people and killing that. them if enough people hate them on Twitter. I yeah. do remember that. That was intense. Um, so, but no, so I that's... kind of misspoke. I didn't mean uh, as literal as I said it as in. in infringing on First Amendment rights. I guess I, all I really meant was um, trans people can't really openly share their opinion without being demonized. I mean, there there are plenty of trans people with a platform that just don't share their opinions. They just kind of leave it half said, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, I've personally seen their facial expressions and say YouTube videos or something as they're talking about something. And I can just tell, like, they have more to say, but they just don't do it because they can't. So this is more so a problem, I think, with people being on the internet and having any type of platform. Are you familiar with a content creator named Dream? I'm not. So Dream is the, one of, arguably, like, the most popular YouTuber out there right now besides PewDiePie. The dude's fucking massive. He started making videos on, at a consistent rate in early, or late 2018, early 2019. He currently okay. has uh, 25 million subs, or 26 million, something along those lines. He's gained tens of millions of subs in the last year and a half. Dude is massive. The guy goes trending on Twitter every time he, like... Ha like, he revealed he has a galaxy mouse pad. A mouse pad of, like, a, a galaxy. And it trended on Twitter. Like, this right. is how massive this guy's platform is. The guy got, got cancelled because him and his friend are, like too close to each other and his fan base considered it queer baiting. The guy got canceled on Twitter for that. I don't think this is so much an issue specific to the trans community as it is people online being extremely militant and um, right. willing to jump onto people that they disagree with and and want to just like dogpile them. This seems to just unfortunately be like a way of engagement that is encouraged by the internet, especially the likes of Twitter. That's actually a very fair perspective. I don't use social media much, so I guess I didn't take it into perspective that it's not just the trans community, but I guess I'm just paying more attention to it considering I am trans. <laughs> yeah, you have sort of like a, a more close perspective there because that's a community you're more entwined with, I, I would presume. Um, right. But no, it, it, is, it is a problem. I think a lot of it has to do, the reason why you see, um, besides like obviously you pay more attention to the trans community, why you <laughs> see a lot of particularly young trans people going after any trans person who who says something along the lines of like you need dysphoria to be trans non-binary people aren't trans or mm -hmm. even something even vaguely interpreted as like true scummy or or right. trans med is because a lot of people that are in that group like if you're non-binary who yeah like have you seen like the the, no, the idea like, the amount of shit that non-binary people get, like, it is nowhere near socially acceptable to be non-binary. Like, binary trans people have it way better than non-binary people do in regards to, like, societal acceptance and whatnot. Um, I so mean, it can, I there's a tendency kind of to sort of... I'm to differ on that aspect. Are you depending sure? on depending on the person because when you look at a binary trans person who is kind of disgusted by the skin they're occupied in and they have to literally change every aspect of their physical appearance to be comfortable in their own skin compared to somebody that like transitions in a more social sense um mm -hmm. There are kind of it's it's a big difference. You know what I mean? Like if you're non-binary and you do transition, then it's much more similar than it is different. But mm -hmm. you, do you understand what I'm saying? No, I completely understand where you're going with this. So 
what, when I say that it's harder to be non-binary than it is to be binary trans, my point is about societal acceptance. Um, obviously, if you're like non-binary and you're just kind of going by different pronouns, maybe you cut your hair differently or you dress or socially transition in a way that more accurately represents your gender identity, you're, you're probably not going to have as hard of a time as a binary trans person, like, like a binary trans woman who goes out and, and is seeking out surgery, takes takes HRT, all, all the things, right? Sorry, obviously yeah. there, it's a lot easier. I'm more so yeah. talking about like, if you come out as a trans woman to like publicly, you're probably going to get made fun of or attacked less than if you come out as non-binary because, you know, the whole attack helicopter thing, there's only two genders, right? At least with like a, a binary trans person, you're still upholding um, or perceived as upholding the there's only two genders thing that so many people believe in. But if you dare identify as non-binary, you are threatening a lot of people's um, idea that there's only two genders. And, and that results in people getting pretty angry. All right. I mean, yeah, that's totally fair, to be honest. But when yeah. it just comes down to societal acceptance over the concept, yeah, 100 um, percent. But it also is subjective with binary trans like um, like right now, I would say I don't really experience transphobia. But like when I first transitioned, it was bad. So it, it totally is subjective on the person and the context. Yeah, um, I completely yeah. agree with that. Um, so what I'm curious about is ooh, more mushrooms. What I'm curious about is um, do you uh, personally believe that, um, I guess, how do I, how do I word this? So Rose of Dawn, do you think someone like Rose of Dawn mostly gets criticism and like a lot of hate uh, because she disagrees with the idea that like non-binary people are valid? Or do you think it would be more so because of the actions she engages in? Um, I don't really know who Rose of Dawn is, so I can't exactly uh, elaborate further. How about Blair further. White? Do you Blair know who White. Blair White is? Yeah, yeah, Blair actually, White's so popular, everyone knows who she is. I'm actually super passionate about this, and it's a very controversial opinion, so you have to promise not to judge me. <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay, so I understand why she gets all the hate she does, and I, I'm not going to say it's not warranted, but what I will say is she is necessary. She does help the trans community. You can argue she doesn't, but she's not appealing to you. She's not appealing to open-minded people. There are a lot of people in this world that are not open-minded. There are people that just hate me for existing, for just being myself. They just hate me. And she can appeal to those people a whole lot better than somebody that is talking about identifying as like objects or like um, non-binary even. Like she can just appeal to that conservative person in a manner a liberal and how liberals perceive gender that person just could never uh kind of change a conservative's opinion do you know what i'm saying yeah so i used to agree with this the idea that blair white sort of has a main line into more moderate conservative viewers who might be a little bit more receptive to her ideas because she's this mm -hmm. very admittedly very good looking extremely what like you know, easily passing um, trans woman who holds conservative values and also kind of dunks on the people that are, are easy, like, targets. Like, oh, I identify as bun bunny. My pronouns are bun bun self. That was one of the recent videos she covered. Very, very easy to bring people in that may not otherwise be receptive to trans people. But then I saw a debate she had with John Doyle and um, some blonde QAnon lady. Ha are you aware of this debate? Was it four people? She was in the Blair was in the it, bottom it was, left corner. Yeah, it was four people. She was. Um, it was like, like a more liberal moderate Republican above her. Yeah, liberal Republican I've seen above it. her. Yeah, I, I watched yeah. the whole thing. So I think we have totally different opinions on this. Let me hear yours. So, I watched that debate, and I came out of it simultaneously being disappointed and feeling bad for Blair. Because at least from my perspective, that entire debate felt like to me, every single time this lady would talk about how the best thing Blair White can do is grow out her mustache and stop influencing people to be uh, degenerates like her. Um, and she goes, no, wait, I'm not like the other trans people. I, I, I actually, I go against the whole, um, you know, uh, kids should be trans thing. And she's like, that's great but you are still a degenerate piece of shit. And she keeps going on trying to say, but no, I'm one of the good ones. That came off to me as Blair White more so seeking validation for herself from a group that otherwise just thinks she's subhuman rather than right. having the effect of normalizing trans people. Has she had that effect? In many cases, definitely. I, I would 
be Ever. remiss to think that she hasn't. However, I, I do think that overall she causes some pretty bad harm. An ideal like outcome would be, I mean, I, I don't know if this is even possible, especially after the Janae Marie Croc thing. Like that was really yeah, egregious. Yeah, that's, that's on. Um forgivable yeah. honestly to some degree yeah did you see um, that she lies on her political compass test did you see that one i did see that look i'm not saying i'm a fan of blair white what i'm saying is she has her usefulness to the trans community not to sound weird but like i truly believe that on that specific debate i actually got a little emotional hearing what that lady had to say to blair because that's what that lady would say to me so mm -hmm. it's like some people are that bad. Some people are never going to come around. But that's not every conservative. My dad's a conservative. He totally, well, he didn't at first, but he totally accepts me. And like all they, all people that aren't necessarily open minded at first glance, all they really need is just a person in front of them, just explaining their uh, themselves and their story to some degree, and not in, in crazy detail. But that can be enough to make somebody's opinion change. Before I went south, I had plenty of conversations with people who thought they were transphobic and they walked out of that conversation being like, oh, they're just normal people. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I I really feel bad for Blair, the fact that she went to that debate and just, you, you saw it. They were terrible to her, or at least the one lady. She was awful to Blair. But the fact that she does that, she does it for the trans community. You can say it's for her. I would argue it's for her demographic, trans women, not for the, the trans community, but for trans women. And as a trans women, woman, I appreciate what she's trying to do because, you know, conservatives, if they don't come around to accepting trans people, our lives aren't going to get a whole lot easier, specifically visibly trans people. Their lives aren't going to get easier until uh, conservatives start accepting trans people in higher numbers and quite frankly a liberal approach is never going to do that to a conservative so it depends what you're talking about so i understand where you're coming from here i want to make sure that i i clarify that i completely understand your position okay. however i feel as though the method through which blair white tries to normalize trans people to conservatives is conditional so when blair white normalizes trans people to conservatives it encourages their acceptance to be conditional. If you're too cringy or too left-leaning, you're not valid. But hey, if you're uh, a conservative and you're hot enough, then, you know, maybe maybe I'll allow you to exist. I mean, you're still, a lot of them will still believe that they're, like, degenerates or weird and still feel super uncomfortable yeah. around them. But they'll at least tolerate them out of recognizing, um, from their perspective, that they're pulling people in, especially because I think Blair White mm -hmm. serves more... Uh, definitely does better, uh, uh, causes more good things to happen for the right than she does the left or like the tra the cause for like trans acceptance, considering that she's made conservatism way more palatable to LGBT people, especially young LGBT people. Um, but it's very different than like, let's say a leftist does it. Like if I make a video in which I debate a conservative about the validity of trans people, I've had countless, since I had like 5,000 subs. I've had countless conservatives or ex-conservatives, I should say, who have messaged me saying, I watched your debates. I watched your videos in which you debunk some transphobic thing. I used to think trans people were mentally ill degenerates, but now, like, after hearing all the studies and all the facts behind this, I'm to like, I, I completely different now. I've even had trans people who didn't even realize they were trans or dysphoric who saw my content, got over their transphobia, and then came out um, and realized That's they were amazing. trans. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice feeling. It makes you feel warm inside. But um, definitely, I feel like that's a more effective method of normalizing trans, like like being trans to conservatives or just people in general to society, than trying to encourage conditional acceptance. That's a fair point, and for the most part, I agree. I just I do think there's a type of person without having seen that relatable transverse that just like like Blair White an attractive girl without seeing that person they're never going to come around to the rest of the community and heck they're never going to come around to uh, binary trans without having seen that person and of course the whole trans community needs to gain more acceptance amongst conservatives and and the way we start to do that is by showing them people like Blair White not to sound weird but quite frankly somebody like her can make them understand better than somebody like uh, Luxander like a known youtuber kind of do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. uh if, if you're explaining to conservatives 
gender theory, as soon as you say gender is a social construct, like they immediately hate you. Like that's it. Yeah. Um, oh no, absolutely. Yeah. But that's always the best way to get them. If I come in, if I go into a debate with a conservative and they want to argue over gender, the stu the science is on my side. If I say gender is a social construct and we're having a debate, and then I bring up a bunch of studies and and like this overwhelming academic consensus that agrees with my position, and they still disagree with it, and then have like their little breakdown on stream, then everybody who's watching sees how evident it is that my position, the the affirming of trans people's identities position is correct, and this random conservative that I'm arguing with that thinks that gender and sex is the same thing and there's only two genders is wrong. At least in my experience, that's how it usually goes. Yeah, and that's fair. I've just personally spoken to conservatives that thought they would never come around to accepting trans people and by what i would have to say which would have been considered the i guess trans medicalist approach like doctors and medical boards recognize mm -hmm. gender dysphoria and blah blah oh, blah when you oh, take yeah. that approach I wanna, they can i want to make it very clear if you're trying to like freshly bread pill someone on like trans acceptance you should usually argue from a more um like trans medicalist perspective, because there's a lot more data, like hard data behind that than there is for, because you have to get into sociology and theory to That's validate right, yeah. like like non-binary people's identities a bit more. Um, in many cases, obviously you can cite dysphoria, but not every trans person or non-binary person experiences dysphoria. Um, that's just like really getting into the mud. But if you're going to argue with like your 55 year old conservative dad, the validity of trans people, it's usually a lot easier to sell them on like a more trans medicalist perspective exactly. to start and then kind of let them dip their toes into the more theoretical sociological understanding of gender. It's just, it's like, you know, boiling the frog, essentially. Right. I actually have, am a, yeah. I actually am a sociology major, but on, on the oh, note you were just yeah. uh, speaking of, um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> What'd you just say? I was talking about how usually it's way easier to sort of explain the validity of oh, trans exactly. people through, through the trans medicalist perspective to start. Yeah. Okay. So that being said, you do know that a lot of so-called trans medicalists they are only, they only consider themselves that because they use that argument that is it they aren't necessary like most of them <clears throat> it's fair to say most of them are not hateful people and to say that is is kind of being transphobic i mean like mm -hmm. five years ago let's say five years ago when that was still kind of the mainstream argument we can both agree being nasty to people that disagreed with that, AKA I think they call it the too cute side or whatever. If you were mm -hmm. to be mean to them at that point in time, we can both agree that is wrong. You shouldn't be hating on trans people for being trans. Now it's kind of in reverse. And now they get a whole ton of hate just for trying to have that more palatable argument to uh, cis people, if that makes sense. I have one tiny gripe with that. So when so you say that if it, like people that get really upset at trans medicalists or true scum because they say that like you know uh, being trans is a medical diagnosis it's a medical thing there's nothing social about it there's only two genders what have you um that getting mm -hmm. mad at those people and like shit talking them is transphobic i would disagree with that obviously there may be transphobic um motivations to shit talking them but generally if it's coming from the left or coming from like non-binary people usually it's because they have an issue with what they're saying and doing and not their identity right. my, my what i think transphobia is is when you attack someone who is trans for being trans so. right well i do agree that where transphobia is kind of thrown around way too loosely it truly is um but specifically about trans medicalists um I think it's totally wrong to even try to take a side to try to say you're either one side or the other on this issue because it's just playing into transphobia, honestly, because the whole debate, it just pits trans people against each other. And if you play into it in any form, you aren't helping the situation. Do you know what I'm saying? Especially like if you're trans, mm -hmm. I can understand you being passionate on an opinion, but I just really think cis allies should shy away from the topic completely. I don't know if that's entirely true because as I said before, I think that a lot of like, I hate I hate this term and I don't call myself it ever and I've said this a million times, I hate calling myself like a trans ally or cis ally or whatever it's called. Right. I follow the facts and I've come to the conclusions that I've come to and I wanna make society good and that's why I advocate for what I advocate for because I think I'm right and I think that my opinions will make life for 
as many people as possible better. Um, they don't have like a super hard, like moral, okay, yeah. idealistic sort of um, demagoguery thing going on where it's like, I, I, I'm a trans ally, ally first and an arguer for the truth okay. second. It's more so like, yeah, I've, I've done my research and I've come to the conclusions that I've come to and I advocate for them as I do, right? And I've found through my That's research very virtuous, that trans people are valid. Honestly. So, so, I wish more people had your take, honestly. The only reason we have to have this conversation is because people aren't open-minded. And one last thing, um, I don't mean to sound like a trans medicalist. I really don't. I, I Like I said, I, I don't like people taking sides on that issue. I just like people to say things how they are. If someone's an asshole, you call them out on it. You know what I mean? You don't just uh, pick and choose, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't... I don't uh think at least from what i've heard so far that you're like a, a, a trans med or a like trans okay, cool. or whatever. so generally when you <laughs> hear criticism from like what back in the day would be called like the too cute community or you hear a broader um criticism from anyone who's not like unhinged like the people that were canceling contrapoints like mm -hmm. uh, obviously they, they're an exception to this and and that should be very evident um my 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 favorability towards ContraPoints is very public. I think she's probably one of the best content creators that's ever existed. Um, no doubt, in, in at least opinion. in the trans community. It just overall, in my opinion, but yeah. So, that's fair, actually. So, all right. So generally, when I talk about true scum, and when I would say most of the more like um, non-trans medicalist or non-true scum part of the trans community talks about Tr these groups they're usually talking to the types of people that you would see on are you are you aware of a board that like the trans or lgbt board on 4chan i'm not oh uh, have you ever heard the term han h-o-n uh yeah isn't it like kind of derogatory towards trans women yeah, it's a term used by trans women towards trans women to uh, basically attack a trans woman, another trans woman who who they believe doesn't pass well enough. Ter oh, this is, that's this is where, Yeah, that like places like the the 4chan LGBT board is where that uh, came from. There are actual 4chan boards of of trans people, usually trans women, who literally spend all their day shitting on other trans people. They even attack contrapoints because they think she's like they call her that that word. And many people right, say it's a yeah. slur. Um, well, and I would argue, I depending mean, on the context, it is. Turfs certainly use it as a slur. Like a couple yeah. months ago, I was like kind of in the hospital, like kind of recovering, and a nurse, she had a thick Southern accent. And I've, I've grown accustomed to when someone with a thick Southern accent knows I'm trans, they're just rude to me, to be quite honest. Um, mm -hmm. She called me hun every sentence. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I was pretty sure. <laughs> so rude I, I i don't know if that if that nurse would knew about like the knew that word as it's as it's been coined but it might just be possible that's how she talks but i, I don't know like i wasn't there but um i mean it's possible yeah um right, but the, yeah. the the term from my understanding comes from uh like the the lgbt board on 4chan which is like very very bad so that's typically what we're talking about um at least for me what i'm talking about whenever i discuss like you know, true scum or people like, and you can look into her if you like, if, if you're really curious, but I'll give a small like explanation. Uh, Rose of Dawn, who, and I kid you not, might I'll be one of the out. biggest pieces of shit ever. Oh she, gosh. Um, <laughs> one of her most popular memes is she's got like a very thick British accent, like just a disgusting British accent. I, I'm, I'm a little racist towards British people, okay? Um, Their accents are amazing, you can't doubt that. <laughs> um, so she said, so, you're a trans woman, or at least you think you are, and you think that you're going to look like this. You think you're going to look like this cute little baby seal, and you're going to be like, oh, look how fluffy I am, I'm a little seal. But in reality, you're probably going to look like this, this big bull seal. And shows like a, a big, you know, like two-ton bull seal, and, and she says, yeah, this is going to be you. You're going to come in, and you're going to look like this big bull seal, and you're going to be like, this is a woman's body. I belong in women's spaces. And then no one's going to like it. Like, that, that's, like, the most popular, that's like, so meme cringy. rant. Yeah. So, like, it's generally people like that that we're talking about who, like, base their channels on, like, featuring some non-binary 14-year-old on TikTok and bullying them and sending a hate storm towards them or, like, the kind of things Blair did um, with uh, uh, Janae Marie Kroc. That kind of stuff seems to be what the broader trans community outside of the insane people who canceled Contra are typically talking about whenever they engage in in veracity with like trans meds or true scum. Okay. They're usually referring to people like that, at least in my experience. 
I'm not going to lie. You have kind of consoled me a little bit over this issue because since learning about it, um, I, I've borderline kind of just done a ton of research online and just kind of interacted for the first time in online trans communities. And because of that, I assumed all trans spaces are kind of like that toxic cancel contra points over nothing nonsense. So the fact that I'm talking to a person, not like someone over a keyboard, and then they're actually telling me that's kind of extreme and not how it goes in real life, that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> well, I'm, I think, you know, so for me at least, I'm very, um, I'm very big on optics. I think that when it comes mm -hmm. to politics, Optics is essentially everything. If you can't, if you're trying to convince people that you hold the correct position, unfortunately, it really all does just come down to how people perceive your positions. And a lot of this has to do with optics. You can make the uh, the correct argument, but if you're screaming it in someone's face and coming off as a triggered, like, SJW or whatever, they're not going to listen or consider a word you have to say, which is why people like, you know, like, I guess you could say me, people like Vosh, people like even Destiny, um, got so popular in the first place is that they were left-leaning people who made very progressive arguments but were able to do it in ways that were appealing to the general population because they didn't come off as preachy or like they were just screaming it in your face. They were just able to do well. So that's generally what I try to go for, like good optics, it's important. Yeah, and honestly, new alternative media like YouTube is kind of blowing up. So you stay with this, you should have a really good career ahead of you. <laughs> Seems like your subscribers so. have been... Yeah, they've been, it's been dropping a little bit the sub count because YouTube sub purges and politics get a little bit like mm -hmm. less popular after an election. But overall, I'd say I'm pretty lucky to be where I am at 21 years old. So I'm gonna I'm keeping at That's it. That's awesome. It's, I thought you were older, to be honest. <laughs> a lot of people think that. People even think I'm way younger than I am, like I'm 16, or they think that I'm like 25. But now 21, 22 next month. I would have leaned more towards like 25. <laughs> Yeah, the haircut and the uh, little bit of facial hair I've been trying to grow is is does that. Um, well, hey, is there is there anything else you want to touch on? Um, hmm. I guess if you're willing to listen, maybe elaborate more on why I'm so passionate. It's not okay to like hate on any group in the trans community uh, based on my personal experience, almost like a story time, unless you're like kind of in a rush or something, which is no worries. <laughs> nope, it's all good. You can do your story time. Okay, that was kind of silly wording, I'm sorry. But um, essentially, long before I really knew much about the trans community, I was deep in my transition at the time, but uh, it was like maybe 2017, I wanna say. Um, essentially, I was talking to a coworker and I just kind of said, just to clarify, terms in the trans community have changed very rapidly. And in those days, Generally speaking, people only had trans labels if they had transitioned. So at the time, having not really been around the community, I was under the impression transitioning is what makes somebody trans at the time. So because I was under that impression, granted, it's 2017, it wasn't knowledge wasn't so widely available. But this this particular cis ally, super knowledgeable and basically assumed I was a trans medicalist because of that stance. And like I said, I don't like to use the word transphobia, but like he was hella rude to me about my um, surgical status, about how trans am I, about uh, every which detail he wanted to know because he wanted to like prove me wrong about my opinion based on my own uh, transition status. And at the time, that was super personal. I wasn't as far as I wanted to be, but... I just, he was super negative. He told all my coworkers I was quote unquote transphobic. No joke, literally a trans person being transphobic. And I, of course it didn't really fly when my coworkers realized I wasn't, but because of that experience, which I didn't really understand much of until I understood the true scum debate, because of that experience, I've learned that just because a group has a inaccurate opinion, you shouldn't demonize the entire group. like they're not necessarily hateful people and in my experience trying to communicate with true scum people they they have conversations they aren't hateful do you know what i mean so i guess that's mm -hmm. why i'm just so passionate on this topic that it's really not oh it's not good for trans people for cis people to police what it means to be trans and to tell them what their opinions should or shouldn't be do you know what i mean not that I'm saying you're doing that or anything, but that's just why I'm kind of touchy on people demonizing true scum, because it's like I wasn't and I was still demonized. Do you know what I mean? 
so this I think um, might be, I think your take is sort of a, I guess I, I don't want to sound rude when I say this, but may, maybe a bit of an oversimplification, at least from my view. Um, granted, I, I am cis and you are Probably. trans, so maybe I'm wrong here. <laughs> um, so I think that anybody who is cisgender and tries to argue against or discount the personal lived experience of a trans person is probably doing an overall dis disservice to the um to like the discussion being had to the entire topic as a whole even right um, in, my, in my personal opinion disagreements that are had should be done over like facts right so if, a, if you're a cis ally uh, i hate that term but you know we'll use it for <laughs> the sake of simplicity if you're a cis ally or whatever and you're you're arguing with like a pretty hardcore true scum right like someone like rose of dawn someone like blair white and you're mm -hmm. arguing for the validity of non-binary people and you have a disagreement. The disagreement should stick to the facts. You should be arguing about like, well, here's what this study says. This is what these sociologists say. This is what this, um, you know, data analysis says, rather than trying to discount the experience that Blair has. If she says, well, I use these arguments and it's helped me a lot in my, um, you know, uh, you know, interactions with the world. If you're a cis and, and you want to argue against that, I mean, you, you, you can't. Like, that's a really bad idea to try to argue against that it's particular totally. trans woman or trans man it doesn't matter like um their lived experience i would generally try to stick to the facts in a debate like that you know right yeah yeah so sorry for like almost venting and explaining that i just wanted you to have clarity as to why i'm weird over this issue no i completely get it um hold on can i ask my chat a question really quick does anyone know how i start the escape from umbra fen quest here because i think that's the that's the NPC we're supposed to escort, and I'm guessing that once the escort mission is done and they've done it, then the, the mob will respawn here to start the quest. But if not, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Alt F4 while looking for the uh, NPC. Fuck you. All right. Uh, okay, I'm done, I'm done talking to the chat. Um, yeah, so... No worries. Did you have any more, like, input on that? Um, I guess that's everything, to be honest. I really appreciate you taking the time to hear me out. Absolutely no problem. It's been a fun talk. Um, I do enjoy talking to people that um, take issue with my positions uh, when they're like interested in, in, you know, actually having a discussion. Debates are fun, and and I will always be it down to be, have like yeah. a super. Yeah, I mean, I'll always be down to have a blood sporty debate. Those bring in the viewers like crazy. But for like my own personal satisfaction, just generally trying to make the world better, I prefer having like conversations like this a lot of, a lot of the time. It's why if I ever oh. talk to anybody with any significant platform, like when I. I talked to Long Beach Griffey a while back, really big YouTuber, about like the validity of trans people. We didn't have a debate, we had a discussion. And I think it came out of it, like, I think it was pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'll have I to check it out. That. Oh yeah, if you want to check it out, it, it's, uh, it's a good combo. But I, I was actually curious, are, are you okay if I upload like this segment of us talking to YouTube as a video, or no? Um, that's totally fine, I don't mind. Okay, yeah, I, was just, I just wanted to make sure since, uh, we had a pretty fun combo. Okay, well, um, it, do you want to like shout yourself out to the chat before you go? Um, no, I'm shy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a really fun conversation, and um, hope to see you around. Yeah, it was a total pleasure. I'm definitely gonna subscribe to your channel or paid subscription, whatever. Blah blah blah. <laughs> I'm a Ooh. dedicated fan now. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Full on. Xander Holic. All right. Well, okay, I, really I look appreciate forward to, that. Look forward to seeing this on YouTube and hopefully my tranny voice didn't flare too much. <laughs> All righty. Have a good one, okay? I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Okay. That was a fun combo. I think that was pretty good. Did she did she say the T slur at the end? I can't tell. I think she might have said the the T slur at the end, but she is trans, so I I mean, well. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like if, yeah, I can't, I can't really, yeah, also I did not know that she was trans. I, I, I just kind of like brought her in and I was like, okay, we got a Scott Cawthon fan debate. And she was like, no, I'm trans. We're going to, we're going to talk about this. And I was like, oh, um, okay. Yeah, I'm down to talk about that. But I was expecting, I was expecting a, um, like a, a Scott Cawthon debate, but I guess we have a Scott Cawthon fan here that we can debate. What's the T-slur? Um, you know what the T-slur is. The, the T-slur is, is... It's the T-slur. Um, but yeah. All right. Well, if you enjoyed that talk, please leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell icon, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, 
TikTok, the link's in the description. Join my fan Discord. And uh, if you have the money for it and you can afford it, um, please donate or subscribe on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, super chat on YouTube, or hit the join button to become a channel member, or perhaps even pledge to me on Patreon. Any support that you're able to offer, whether it be monetary or just generally through like watching the video or liking it or whatever, is always appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.